News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, fire crews attend to a large brush fire. And the BLM is investigating numerous borough deaths. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell, Unette Gentry, News 25, local coverage you can count on. A homeless camp goes up in flames is Tuesday, July 16th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. Well, fire crews from Front Valley Fire and Rescue responded to a large brush fire last night just off Betty Avenue and Highway 160. Just before 8 p.m., we observed a heavy fire condition developing in an area north of the fire station, main fire station, on Highway 160, but to the east of the highway. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't know exactly what was burning initially. Uh, crews responded. We found a, a one-plus acre mixed fuel between mesquite and, and cedar that was uh, well involved. It was extending rapidly. It was not necessarily wind driven, but it was creating some of its own wind due to the heat it was producing. Um, it was contained to a bowl, but a relatively large size bowl. And it had some also some fingers, which are extensions of the fire going up several of the ravines and um, some of the washes in the area. So we had to be extremely careful, very limited access. Uh, there were no paved roads. There were some dirt roads, but they again had some pretty large washes running through them or dissecting them. So some of our apparatus could not get closed. So it was a matter of anchoring the fire, which is at the heel of the, the back end, and using hand crews running along the flanks uh, to control, to contain it, and then eventually extinguish it. We used uh, actually hand tools, uh, wildland hand tools, which are specific applications. Uh, they had their wildland PPE. They had the brush truck. They also had our attack truck, which is a, what we would call a Type 6. It's a little bit smaller than our big brush truck, but it can navigate in some of those areas a little bit better. We also, um, Captain Moody, cut a swath through the middle of it using chainsaws. So that allowed us to get that Type 6 down into that area. And once the fire was contained, then they were able to successfully mop it up. It could be an explosive situation. Um, several times when we thought the fire was contained, all of a sudden it would rapidly advance again. Uh, hit a good fuel pocket and it would create 30, 40 foot flame lengths that could be viewed throughout the valley. So we had to be extremely careful that we had to be aware of our surroundings because those washes were quite deep. They were numerous in nature. The ground gave away easily. We had to watch for any secondary issues like snakes and things like that that would be leaving that area. We were also very, very aware that it appeared to be a homeless camp and so we were making sure that everybody was clear of that area. There was evidence of a homeless camp in the middle of it, which would make sense because it's a very wooded area. It would create that shade during the day and then afford them the opportunity to get into the center part of town because it's right across the highway. We believe it's related to homeless camp activity. Uh, we can't tell you if, for certain if it was unattended cooking left or some kind of small fire that was left unattended. Um, when we saw the call, we heard vehicles in the area, but we were unable to observe any of them. We don't know if it's people that were just attracted who are coming in to watch the fire. And we have to warn you, this next story has images that might be too graphic for some, bureau, some viewers because the Bureau of Land Management is leading an investigation into the deaths of wild burrows in the Halloran Springs area in San Bernardino County in coordination with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office. Almost a dozen burrows have been killed and those animals were reportedly shot to death. The deaths are similar to those that were reported near Beatty several months ago. And anyone with information about this investigation is encouraged to call WeTip. And that hotline number is 800-78-CRIME or 800-782-7436. Or you can visit the WeTip.com website. Callers might be able to remain anonymous and would be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000 for any information leading to the arrest or conviction of any person or persons responsible for the deaths of those protected animals. Sad story. New information has been released regarding a detention center death. 
The suspect and victim identification has been released by the Nye County Sheriff's Office concerning a homicide that occurred on July 12th at the Core Civic Federal Detention Center on Mesquite Avenue here in Pahrump. The suspect has been identified as Wyatt Peterson, the victim, Frank Tochi, who is 28 years old. The cause of death was strangulation and the manner homicide, according to police. Tochi was found last Friday morning at approximately 4 a.m. during a security check. It is said that Peterson and Tochi were co-defendants on a federal case in which both were accused of assault on a federal officer. Both have pled not guilty, their trial set for November of this year. Peterson is still being held at the Core Civic Detention Center. His new charges have not been released at this time. And don't grab that remote. We'll be right back here at KPVM. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, China has been taking some hits in the stock market recently. That and more in international news that could affect your bottom line. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. China's economy is slumping. The Asian nation's economic growth grew at 6.2% in the second quarter. That is the lowest level in three decades. The trade war is blamed. It's having a direct effect as Chinese consumers are buying fewer American-made cars and products from Apple. Big banks are revealing earnings this week. Citigroup was the first to report. Citi beat analyst expectations with a profit of $4.7 billion. Citigroup's business was boosted by its work on the IPO of TradeWeb, which is an electronic bond trading platform. It could be a while before Boeing 737 MAX 8 gets back in the air. Southwest, United, and American are all delaying flights. And now, the Wall Street Journal reports the grounding could last throughout the year. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Well, the Nye County Sheriff's Office has issued a press release in the search for a vandalism suspect. The Nye County Sheriff's Office has issued a release seeking information regarding the person or people responsible for the vandalism that occurred over the 4th of July holiday weekend at the Pahrump Community Pool in Petrick Park. The Sheriff's Office says that the cost incurred by the town of Pahrump was approximately $25,000 after a person reportedly threw a Budweiser glass bottle onto the deck of the pool area, which caused glass to go into the pool and the 250 50,000 gallon pool to be completely drained and cleaned. Police say that pool staff viewed the video that was available and nothing was shown. If you have any information about this crime, you're urged to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000. You can remain anonymous. A missing California woman fortunately has been located alive with her dog. 60-year-old Cheryl Powell and her dog went missing Friday at a mountain campsite in Inyo County. Her husband told authorities that Powell went to the restroom while he moved the car, but his wife never returned. Authorities say they were investigating the circumstances surrounding that disappearance of the Huntington Beach woman who was found at the Montego Springs after four days of being missing. She was in an exhaustive search and she was finally found and she was chased with a knife and then ran and escaped an attacker who pursued her. That man is described as bald with a tanned skin tone. If you have any information, please call authorities. All right, the Nike Community Coalition hosted the Family Fun Festival over the weekend. We caught up with filmmaker JG Blodgett. Uh, it went really well and we uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, it was actually a, a bit tough to get going when we were setting up. We had a, a few hiccups um, but luckily by the time it was uh, time to say action everything worked out really well. People started showing up. Uh, we had our red carpet event and everybody uh, had a lot of fun taking pictures and being silly and uh, trying on some different like Hollywood scarves and different things while I took pictures mm -hmm. and then and we just had a great time doing screenings uh, both old and new probably showed about I'd say 10 to 15 mm -hmm. uh, we showed a few from the uh, past film festivals that Linda Cass was awesome enough to give to us so we can kind of fill some time and mm -hmm. ramp up to the ones that we were actually doing and the ones that were competing today 
Um, so we showed those first four from old film festivals and we showed a couple from some gentlemen in Las Vegas. <laughs> Two awesome gentlemen that were yeah. nice enough to give us a couple films as well to show the kids and, and show them some uh, other aspects of filmmaking. And then of course our five that competed. We actually uh, put together the one that was the, the main portion of the, uh, the film uh, camp that we got the grant for um, through NICC and through Faith Fellowship. And then we uh, put together one more just kind of on the fly because the uh, youth over at Faith Fellowship wanted to do one. So we put together two uh, just alone that kind of went head to head, I guess you can say. But uh, another young man that was uh, um, uh, entering his own film, he entered one that he did all by himself. I mean, yeah. he shot it, edited it, did music and all kinds of stuff. It was, uh, it was really uh, an interesting piece. Uh, it was probably the most art house piece we had. Um, it was uh, pretty cool. The other two films, just so you know who all was actually competing, we had the uh, Minecraft Club uh, through 4-H. They submitted a, basically an animation of Minecraft and kind of made a story with it, okay. uh, which was really neat. And then um, the final one was the 2018 film camp um, from the High Desert Shorts International Film Festival. So between all of them, it really uh, came pretty close, but there was a film called Not Alone, uh, which was one of the camps that I was involved with this year um, that took it. It was, it was, uh, it was a really heart-wrenching drama and brought yeah. a lot of tears. So uh, I think that's just kind of what people responded to the most, I guess. So we were hoping for some tears just because, I mean, as filmmakers, <laughs> we're trying to create a response. And uh, we had an awesome uh, composer who put together this really, like, sad, as well as inspirational music with a lot of violins and stuff. So, you know, it was supposed to, uh, it was supposed to be sad. And, yeah. and in order to get the grant to, all these films have to be based on some kind of prevention or something like that, some kind of awareness uh, campaign. Um, and they did one, uh, the kids chose to do one on uh, two eating disorders. So, so the, the girls had to do, uh, bring some really, uh, really deep, dark acting to kind of portray that. So, um, but yes, they uh, had me, they wrote me in there to be the dad who's kind of mean to one of the girls. And um, I don't like being in front of the camera too much. I prefer being the director or something like that behind it. But um, I think I did okay. Yeah. I, I think everybody didn't like me in the room oh, <laughs> at that moment. So when they were seeing me yell at the young girls. So, but yeah. You gonna do this next year? Um, I'm hoping to. Yeah. I mean, I was asked to do it this year, uh, kind of out of nowhere, and uh, I was glad to do it. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of work and it gets stressful sometimes, but in the end, seeing the results and seeing what we came up with and seeing how happy the kids were to yeah. like win their awards and just go through the whole process. It was cool. We don't have a solid plan uh, in place yet. And I was so happy with how both films came out. I would like to submit them to other larger festivals and just see what they can do and see where they go and get these kids some exposure for all their hard work. Um, but after that, yeah, we plan to share them and a couple of the parents are getting their own downloads of the copies, so they're going to be sharing them. So we should be able to see them um, hopefully online and I can actually give you an actual link, I guess, uh -huh. once we know and have a better plan for that. Congratulations, kids. Yes. All right. And stay tuned. We'll be right back with much more local news. News 25 is brought to you by... Bill and Robin Wall, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Welcome back. Well, the Pahrump Valley Rotor Rotary Club moved a veteran into her newly decorated home after that military member had been sleeping on only a mattress in her home for the past year. Well, I found out through the grapevine that there was a disabled single veteran who purchased a home almost a year ago and all she had in the house to live off of was her bed. Um, her storage units, three of which she was paying for monthly, are just chocked full with furniture. So I took that information back to my Rotary Club and presented it and we decided that we would empty out all three of her uh, storage units and bring everything over to her new home. We asked for volunteers and we have quite a few volunteers here. We still have one more unit to empty, however because the heat of the day is upon us now we're probably going to do that um, uh, either next weekend or one evening this week. A lot of items going in there. Do you know why she was without um, any of this items for the last year? Apparently she just ran out of money. 
you know, it happens. Yeah. You don't realize how many things you have and you fill up one storage, it overflows to a second and a third. So she had to repaint the inside of the house because the color that was selected was triggering her PTSD. So she repainted the whole interior of the house herself with the help of one of her neighbors. And um, so she kind of ran out of funding to have her furniture moved. Well, we always, our motto being service above self, as a Rotarian, I just, I can't stand to see people in need when there are a lot of people that are available and can help. Anybody who wants to volunteer is more than welcome to come over and talk to either myself or Barbara Thompson, uh, and we'll make arrangements to have them come and help with the last loads. We're, we're working really hard. We've been out here since 8 this morning, and this is our last load for the day. Yeah. <laughs> you, anybody can call me who wants to help at 775-764-0681. And I'll be glad to help put you in touch with when we're going to do that last load. I was Army. I was one of the very first female military police in the Army. And so um, you have the Rotary helping you. You've been without furniture here for the last year. Uh, last nine months. I will help anybody that needs help. For me to ask for help, I don't. I, I just can't. It's not in me. Yeah. So they went around me and said, oh, guess what? We're going to help you. I did the world tour yeah. everywhere in the world. For how many years? Not quite 20. My knees went, couldn't chase people down. So after the Army, I went to law school. And I haven't worked in 21 years as an attorney. So I've had eight strokes, and mentally it just doesn't work anymore. The next oh, month or so will be putting things where they go. So um, what does this make you feel like today? Like Christmas? Like somebody cares about me, and it's static to see all this stuff in my garage and in the house. Now it's just a matter of getting it put together. Good job, Rotarians at work. Well, Nye County's first charter school is set to open up next year. We caught up with Dr. Tom Waters to get the details. It's going to start in August of 2020, and it is, a, it is a public charter school. It's also college prep, and we're going to be starting grades uh, K through 5. I'm not a professor. I'm going to be one of the board members. Uh -huh. uh, no, I did not want to take on any other responsibility at this time. Because I know that you're a former educator. Yes, I am, and I do have a doctorate degree in education. That's why I'm Dr. Waters. There you go. Nothing medical. This is a public charter school. Many charter schools charge a fee. This is a public charter school, so there is no fee. It's just like the regular pu public school. But this is going to be a college prep char charter school. Uh, it is the first charter school in Nye County. And we know that there are a lot of uh, students that are out there that are homeschooled, and the parents are already signing them up. Mm -hmm. If you go to the PVA, Paramount Valley Academy website, uh, you can see exactly how to sign up how to get involved in, in making this happen. It is something brand new that we're, we're starting, and we expect it to be an astounding re a success. We have on the board, and I can talk about the board primarily, uh, primarily everyone has a doctorate degree, and those are the board members. Uh, we have Sable Morandi. She's the executive director, and she should have her doctorate very soon. Um, She's very well educated, believes in education, and this is her dream to start this, and I support her 100%. We haven't mapped it out. Uh, we are looking at that because first we need the certification, mm -hmm. and once we receive the charter, then we'll receive everything else that we have going with it. But right now, all of that is being looked at by the um, Charter School Association. It's going to be a in-classroom school. Well, and, where? And and that's what we're looking at. It'll be here in Pahrump. Mm -hmm. uh, location, I can't give you that right now. Mm -hmm.
But once you go online, and we have so many people signing up right now, but once we firm everything up, and we've got until August of next year mm -hmm. uh, before we're actually opening the doors, but uh, we have everything else in line to be approved and to make this a reality. Again, K through five, we're starting, and each year we'll add, add a year until we have K through 12. Go online, go to the website for PVA, Pahrump Valley Academy, and you will learn a lot there. It also has all the information about the board members, has information about the executive director, and it has information about all the plans that we have for the school. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, time to take a look outside at our warm but beautiful conditions in the Pahrump Valley. Look at that beautiful shot overlooking Pahrump, and we'll take a closer look at how high those temperatures will go when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Today's highs in Las Vegas, 109, low of 79, Death Valley, 118, 84 is your low, Amargosa, 105, 71, Beatty, 101, 65, Goldfield, 93 is your high, 57 is your low, Tonopah, 90, 56, Carson City, 88 is your high, 54 is your low, Fallon, 93, 57, and Fernley, 92, 58. Today's sunny skies with your current at 103, UV index is at 10, your high 105, winds out of the south at 10 miles per hour, with humidity at 7%, sunrise 538 in the morning. Tonight, clear skies with your low of 76, winds out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour, with humidity at 14%, sunset 8 o'clock even. Your seven-day forecast shows us staying in the low hundreds during the day with uh, just uh, clear skies with just a few clouds coming in early next week and starting out in your low 70s and reaching the high 70s by early next week. Getting a little hotter on the night comes. Definitely. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna. And I'm Yunette. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.